So one of the first things that we like to do is just work on range of motion after our observation. Uh, part of that range of motion is going to have us put the patient into a movement pattern or a cluster of, of, of patterns. So if they had a zygopophyseal joint problem, we would assume that they were going to be limited in ex extension and side bending to that side. If it was a disc, our hypothesis was, would be their pain reproduction would be in flexion. Maybe flexion and side bending to that side, or flexion and side bending away, all depending, but if they have a shift or not. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm gonna do the range of motion. When we're doing range of motion, what I like to do is take my thumb and take up the soft tissue slack near the base of the spine. So we're down near S1, S2. And then I like to take my other thumb and put it above. So I'll follow the rib up so I'll get to the top of the lumbar spine. I'll take my dominant eye and put it center so that when they're doing range of motion, go ahead and bend forward, I can kind of see how much range they have and it gives me two definite points. Good, and come back up. Now I'm gonna have you turn and face this way. Yep, perfect. Because what I wanna do is show you first that you have to take up the soft tissue slack because the thoracolumbar fascia will get in the way. Number two, dominant eye forward. And number three, go ahead and, and flex. This is lumbar flexion, okay? Right, that's almost the end of his lumbar flexion. Keep going. This is hip flexion. You have to differentiate between the two when you're doing your range of motion. So that's for flexion range of motion. When we do extension range of motion, same thing. Go ahead and bend backwards for me. And he has a decent amount of extension. And come back. Now notice his shoulders. If I take his shoulders and have him stack them a little bit, and now have him bend back, he even goes further. When the shoulders are forward, paraspinal activity kicks in. 15% of the body weight in front of the center of gravity is going to change this paraspinal muscle activity. Also, just when he's in normal position, what you'll see, go ahead and bend backwards, stop creasing right there. So go ahead and we'll turn this way. So we know, go ahead and bend, that creasing we're looking for, that's where we're going to go to our biomechanical. Can okay, come back up and go ahead and turn and face this way again, perfect. I'll show side bending. Go ahead and side bend. So we're looking for that curve with side bending and to accentuate side bending, if he slightly flexes his contralateral knee from below, we'll create ultimate side bending for that patient. And let's go the other way. Good. And then soften the other knee just to get more side bending. So that way, you can go through your full planar range of motion, looking for creasing, looking for separation, looking for deviation. If nothing is obvious on that, we move to combined.